Hello and welcome to the AV Forums podcast, streaming live on Wednesday, the 28th of April. And joining me on this end of the month edition is Ed Selly. My name is Richie Cunningham and this is my wife, Oprah. Kaz, hello. I've turned the moon into what I like to call a death star. Tom Davies. I need an old priest and a young priest. And Steve Withers. Just a little prick. Welcome back. Like I said, it's the end of the month, so we're going to be doing all our favourites, our favourite TV, movies, music, and all that kind of jazz. Uh, also, lots of hardware to talk about. Um, so we're going to be going through all of that. And of course, this is our one-year anniversary. Is it? Uh, 30th of uh, April was when we did our first ever on-screen live video stream. So we've been doing this a year. It simultaneously and- feels much longer and quicker yep. than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you know what I'm saying. I know exactly what you're saying. Um, yeah, it's uh, it doesn't feel like a year, but it feels like a fortnight. Yeah. Um, so what have we been doing? What have we been playing with? What have we been up to? Tom hasn't been on the podcast for a while. So, um, Tom, tell us what you've been up to. Well, I have been uh, indulging in some physical exercise recently. Um, Easy. I realized that I was, like, I had, I went out for a run the other day. I had... Um, my black nails on and my guy liner on and I realized that I was probably two meals away from being Robert Smith so I thought (laughs) I'm gonna try and step this up a bit and uh, yeah it's been going pretty well actually I'm not as unfit as I thought I was I am I've been been running 5k every other day well I say running you know on and off up a hill walk up a hill run down a hill um but no it's been good I'm feeling quite good for it as well they say exercise is good for your brains so um yeah, it's it's been nice. Who says that? <laughs> people who people who exercise mainly. Yeah, no, Do- no, doctors okay. mostly say that. Doctors. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I I think that's it really. Uh, oh, I have been starting a marathon of Jack Ryan movies in advance of watching um, Without Remorse on Friday. Uh, I watched the Red October last night, and that was amazing. I have it a feeling a... things are going to go Ray down. the Ivan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One ping. One ping. Only. One ping. Only. <laughs> <laughs> it's brills. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, I started on my rack today. I actually finished it as well. Oh, lovely. Um, oh, it's no wasn't a job I was really looking forward to. and It never uh, is. It went the way that I thought it was going to go. It took me all day. Um, so I finished off a video this morning at 10 a.m. thought, yeah, we'll get this done in a couple of hours. Uh, 6 p.m. I finished. Um, so that was taking all the, the wiring out, straightening it all out, and then taping it together so it all hangs together, and then putting the new amplifier and uh, put the um, the Lingdorf back in, uh, wired all that up, in, and then it was a case of... Uh, there was one connection not working, and it was trying to root that connection out again. So now it's, it now looks nice and neat. But then I've just been told I've got another processor coming for review. So, <laughs> well, it's I mean, gonna, it's, it's, it's all going to get dragged out again. A sissy, a sissyfian task, isn't it? Isn't that the uh, you know? You know yeah, yeah, but yeah. at the at the very least, you have you've you've reset it. So you know, you know, there's the naive belief you might be able to stay on top of it. I mean, I know uh, in practice it doesn't. It's work. Uh, it's a JBL sense of this uh, processor that's coming out next. So I'm actually looking forward to because I've never reviewed any of their kit. I've heard lots of things about it. I've heard demos and stuff. So seemingly it's Arcam A40 on the inside uh, with a couple of tweaks. So I'm pretty interested to see what that's like. I've got C1 coming next Wednesday. So. Um, got that cabin as well and uh, what else i've been doing oh yeah my car is now on the boat so it's now on its way across the atlantic ocean as we speak well actually it's sitting in baltimore at the minute but it will be coming over the ocean this week so i should have it before the end of next month hopefully fingers crossed heavy stuff yeah ed uh well uh another pair of trains turned up uh they're visible to one side of my head um so yes that's i think i'm done now probably anyway for a bit um so there's that uh i've been doing my best to get some work out for you guys it's been a disrupted month um just logistics wise uh i've had a spot of writer's block which always sounds so so 
vain but when you actually do right stuff it's it, it does actually matter from time to time um uh, and yesterday uh, momentous uh, achievement um uh, steve can look away now i drove my car for 200 miles um which is about the longest journey i've ever done in it and i did 40.4 miles to the gallon uh, and that's probably never, ever going to happen again. So let's just take a moment to celebrate that. Um, and uh, it was business as usual this morning. I did uh, 21. So, um, you know, back to where we were. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's where we are. Um, in more, just very brief. Well, you, you say that, Ed, but um, I was up in Scotland at the weekend. So my parents came down here, picked me up, went to look at a caravan that they were purchasing. And I decided to go to Scotland for, for a day. Yeah. And uh, they gave me their second car to use at the minute they've loaned me their second car which is a kia seed estate diesel yeah filled it up 50 quid to fill it up i've driven all the way back from scotland to here i've been round doors all week it's still indicating full <laughs> yeah <laughs> as i say there, there, there's a, a whole uh, uh you know you you become aware that, that the life that we've chosen is not normal but um you know it is what it is very quickly in product news um there's some good products being wrapped up for april but um, there's some some really good stuff that I'm going to be looking at in May. I can't say too much at the moment because neither product has been officially announced yet. But hopefully we've got not one but two exclusives for you. So um, you know, don't say don't say I don't put the legwork in. So uh, see where we go from there. Yeah, they're good exclusives as well. So uh, Steve, what have you been up to? Uh, not much really, actually. Uh, I think what I did end up doing, which was going on a a Sam Raimi season. Um, Starting with the Evil Dead, nice. uh, and and I have to say, it's amazing how fully. Filmed. Oh, it was an actual event. I thought it was an actual event you were going on. Sorry. No, 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 no. I was at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm amazed at how fully formed his visual style is from his very first film. It's incredible. Um, uh, yeah, Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, Army of Darkness, uh, Dark Man, not so good, Crime Wave, <laughs> uh, and um, I was about to watch The Quick and the Dead. And then I realised, oh, it's on 4K disc, so I've ordered that. So until that arrives, I've, I've stopped my Sam Raimi on season. hiatus. Oh, you've got to wait for Drag Me to Hell. And then, yeah, no, well, I will get to it eventually. Oh. Unfortunately, two of his films aren't on Blu-ray. Um, uh, the Gift and um, A Simple Plan are um, that, that mid-90s. Mm. He did sort of serious films <laughs> before they gave him <laughs> Spider-Man. Uh, and... Um, I think tonight, after this podcast, I shall uh, I shall watch my new Blu-ray of Irreversible. So that'll be a fun ninety-eight minutes. Oh, why would oh, you no. do that to yourself? Don't do it. Don't do it. Just say you own it and put just it. Back think, just yourself. say you watched it. Take the shrink wrap off and put it. Why back do on you the need show. to? Watch well, I was going to watch Donnie Darko, but they've bollocks that up, haven't they? Watch Watch the director's cut. I don't want to watch the director's. I prefer the theatrical cut. Watch the director's cut. I've, I've got, got, got to spoon it. feed you. I've got to say the theatrical cut is far superior to the director's yeah, cut. Yeah, the, sp the director's cut spoon <laughs> you, whereas the theatrical cut remains, uh, you know, um, mm. oblique. I don't think I don't think either version spoon feed you, but I do think that the theatrical cut is a, a fantastic mystery for people who just want it to be a, a, a complete Ooh, yeah, mystery. That's the point. But yeah, but I I think for people who find that a bit elusive. Um, I actually quite like the director's cut because I don't find it spoon feeding. And I, I know think it, I think <clears throat> it highlights a few things to make it an easier journey, which I personally prefer. But I, th I think it does the opposite of these ones that just like narrate their way through. I think it's quite subtle the way they introduce that book element and give it chapters. Just make sure you got killing the computer. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, well, yeah, no, that's the thing. yeah, that's how I. I know. Yeah. I know the music choices are the choices he originally wanted, but I prefer yeah. the beginning of the theatrical cut with the Killing Moon. Yeah. It's a yeah. better song. I don't like in excess, but I do like um, Echo and the Bunnymen. So yeah, well, you can all have your Donnie Darko's Basic Instincts coming to 4K. Mm. That's what I'm looking forward to. Fantastic score. One of the iconic scores out there. Right, uh, yeah, no, it's a good, good score. Derek Goldsmith. I don't yeah, yeah, particularly yeah, like absolutely. the film. Uh, the, uh, I, I do like the film, but I, I uh, also like the commentary. So um, uh, it's a classic commentary track. So hopefully that'll be out there as well. So Interesting to see with uh, 4K and HDR, just what you can see up Sharon's skirt. Oh, I, I just I knew uh, in the same way that Con 007 says it, does he do a leg cross in casino no but that bloke's head in a vice in 4k is going to be quite yeah. exciting I've got casino I was, on 4k it's a good disc 
Right. Who have I missed? Kaz? Sure. I, I'm taking a leaf out of Tom's book, it, albeit my knees wouldn't be able to take running. Uh, I'm trying to do um, uh, 10,000 steps a day. It's such an arbitrary figure. I started off so well and I did 15 on Saturday and 12 on Sunday. And then Monday was five and now it's raining. And I think I managed to do 15 steps. But uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> 15. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're back to zero. You know, it's, it's horrible. I, I forgot how useful it was in the first lockdown when the weather was great because, you know, we did a lot of walking. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, in theory, be a bit healthier because I do I do agree it does make a difference and I, I noticed that I can still beat my eight-year-old daughter in a sprint and she can run uh, and that's fine but when my son's eight I'm gonna have problems so uh, so I need to I need to get back into it okay worry I've all, oh, in, in terms of uh, watching stuff I've, I've uh, started watching Banshee I mean, I'm sure everybody else has already seen it um, but I never got wrong. around. You were seen very wrong on that one. Okay, I never, never got around to it. It's got the guy from. Uh, it's got Homelander from, um, uh, from the, the Boys. boys. Uh, the same actor, and its premise is he's a convict who's just been released from prison, and inadvertently um, he takes the I, I don't, uh, the he like, takes the life of a policeman. Not physically, he doesn't kill him, but. He, he takes his identity and takes his role as a, a small town sheriff. And, um, and what ensues is it's a lot of fun. It's very R-rated TV show. Really dark. Uh, it's good, though. Really, really dark. Good. But it, it's nice because he's, he's like a sheriff who just doesn't um, care about following the rules. And uh, he's strangely very efficient at doing his job um i yeah i really i'm only i'm only like three episodes into the first season and it's about to drop from sky uh i've got eight days left right. i think i think it's, there go do it. it's a do challenge it. it's a challenge thank god it's raining otherwise um yeah i'd be stepping instead but yeah that's it okay perhaps you could walk watch it on some sort of treadmill i could yeah i could watch it yeah on my phone whilst walking that's safe or you could get one of those things you know like hangs a carrot in front of you but instead of a yeah. carrot it's just, just like the a thing little again screen. safe very safe yep no, I, well, I was thinking about home-based treadmill rather than you just wandering out watching yes it, it's you know. probably the sensible option yeah <laughs> well steve had one of those headsets didn't you steve that you could watch movies on although you couldn't really walk anywhere could you because no you'd, well you kill it you'd walk into something <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See where you're going. Put on a VR headset. Yeah. You'd, you'd have that term that terminal jump stare uh, scare. Yeah, yeah. No, we turn into Ron right. Atkinson. Right. Um, Condo 007 Sony A90J review. Uh, thanks for reminding us. Uh, if you want to uh, find out more about the Sony TV and stuff, uh, myself and Steve did a podcast um, last week. So the last podcast, if we go and look at the listings, uh, Sony interview. It's done really well. It's over five thousand of you have uh, watched that so far and that's just on youtube so uh, thank you very much for that thanks for all the likes and the comments and the feedback on that uh, as for the review um uh, like everything at the minute uh review samples are quite scarce so i'll be able to review it as soon as sony have one for me it is so tight. that's just, it's as much as i can say at the minute because uh a lot getting any review kit at the minute is uh, it's a bit of a chore all right uh before we move on to hardware we need to do competitions so kaz Sure, you can win an SVS SB1000 Pro and runner-up prizes, including isolation feet, subleads, and T-shirts, courtesy of the American Audio Company. A Lithe Audio Pro Series all-in-one seating speaker kit worth five nine nine ninety nine. That closes June the 4th. Uh, a bunch of new 4K Blu-ray competitions, um, including the Battle Royale 5 Disc Limited Edition Blu-ray box set, Final Lie Delivered 4K Limited Edition box set, Kingsclave, Final Fantasy 15, these are patron exclusives. Regular competitions for Justice Society World War II on Blu-ray, which is really good. Um, the 800 limited edition Blu-ray, which is the highest box office scoring movie of 2020. And uh, Austin Powers. Really probably... low bar, but yes, it was. Yeah, I know. It's, well, I was still surprised. winner of that crown. Yeah, it very much, but uh, I was still surprised. It's still there. It's, and it was shot in IMAX, but it's not presented in... Uh, in even in one seven eight or one eight five, it's it's two point four, 
which I thought was a missed opportunity. And it's not 4K. But other than that, pick that up. Uh, Austin Powers, Collector's Edition, Blu-ray, Fright and Sissy on Blu-ray, and Criterion's April titles on Blu-ray. So head over to avforums.com slash competitions to enter. All competitions open to eligible AV Forums members resident in the UK. Uh, we got some previous winners. Stevie DR won the podcast exclusive Blu-ray of Ip Man Kung Fu Master. Well done, sir. RB2222. I hope I got all the twos there. Or is it 2222? 2222? 2222? I don't know which one. Won the podcast exclusive Blu-ray of Discovery of Witches Season 2. Uh, Duke won a Blu-ray of Michael Palin's Travels of a Lifetime. And Ensor won a 4K Blu-ray of Gattaca. And stay tuned for the podcast exclusive competition, which thus far had 0% of correct entries, which is the all time record. New record. <laughs> oh, no, one person's got it right. Oh, uh, yes, we've broken it. Yes. Very I good. haven't won anything again, Kaz. What's going on here? Yeah, uh, I, have, I haven't noticed your name, Delete. <laughs> yeah. Can I just take I, a moment out to salute podcast uh, podcast listener Condo 007 who has just spent thirteen hundred pounds on a Hot Wheels Super Elite Night Rider kit diecast one to one eighteen scale car. Worth uh, it, mate. Yeah, all the uh, way. You know, let's be honest here. You know, waste of money. That's that's got to be one of the best ways to waste money. Well, well exactly, and also, yeah. at the moment we are in an inflationary world. It is a fixed asset. So long as you don't break <laughs> it playing with it, you know, occupational hazard. Um, you know, I don't think you'll lose on that. So. I do want the like five hundred buck, uh, five hundred buck. Working with Americans too much. Five hundred pound uh, Lotus, which is I think I think it's either one eighteen or I think it's one twenty four maybe um, from uh, Spy Who Loved Me, and it actually converts. I don't mean the you know the dinky one which you press a button oh, and no, the it's about, this, this is yeah. this is your unicorn but it's yes. a lotus I've, it's that yeah you've spoken at length auto about art i think did it it does sound cool no if, question if if condo 007 gets that and brags about it on the podcast i will be upset Kaz knows what I've been I've going. been looking for. My, oh, my next Thunder cats. There is a six hundred quid Thunder tank. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It looks phenomenal. I will. I I remember I used to have one when I was a kid, but just the, the normal toy one. Um, and it looks exactly the same, but it's probably like it's twenty exquisite. times more expensive. <laughs> to be honest, that makes the uh, wedge antils re- re- antils uh, replica helmets that Zavi's going to be selling. Um, wedge look, look, antils, antilles, wedge whatever. Antilles. <laughs> well, except, no, except that there is the lesser. Every antilles. week you pronounce the word in a way that nobody else has ever pronounced no, it in the history no, of the right. world. Right, pedant moment. In the Caribbean are the lesser antilles, <laughs> and they have a second I after the double L. Wedge's name does not. They cannot, but it's pronounced Antilles. Well, that's because it's split. In that case, it's wrong. It's because it's Greek instead of uh, it's Latin. Wrong. It's a made up name to start with. <laughs> write, a, write a strongly worded email to George Lucas. I'm sure that he'll or read every Steve. word of it. Yeah. But no, as I say, the helmet, I mean, that's that's less than £200. So in terms of just randomly throwing money at a point this problem, it's, you know. The, uh, the marketing for this Thunder Tank shows somebody playing with it. Yeah, what are it's, you doing? Yeah, it's, uh, it's is, quite, it for, is it a forty-year-old man with a receiver? You can quite tell worrying. by the hands. Yeah, you forty-year-old man. <laughs> yeah, you can tell it's not a child playing We're, with it. Wearing a shirt not dissimilar to this. So, the, so <laughs> I looked. I looked it up. I eBayed the old battle tank, and the old battle tank is like the size of a lunchbox, a, a yeah. small, yeah. smallish lunchbox. The new battle tank is like the, the width of your table. It's absolutely phenomenal. It'll be a one-eight scale. So oh, it's yeah, it's, I'm you can't it. quite there's, sit in it, but it's pretty there, good. There's a one to eight scale DeLorean that came out a few years ago. They're now, I think it was about 1100 quid at the time. They're now swapping hands for six grand. It's a big, it's a big, a big thing to have lying around, <laughs> yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you know, do you remember when the um GI Joe toys there was one that was just basically an aircraft carrier and it was the size of a child's bed, you know, so their survival rate is comparatively low because they're just gigantic oh look stuart's found the tank i mean i have to that is a mag- <laughs> that is a magnificent thing and that is very clearly tom <laughs> yeah. team show yeah she will it be is, mine oh yes she will be mine your hands are looking a bit thin tom 
<laughs> that, he had a manicure for that. It's Look, pretty he's... big, though. I mean, it's pretty big. Um, yeah, the... but it is. It's. It's. I mean, I have to admit, I always thought the original Thunder Tank was a, was was a cabriolet, but. Um... It's got an open front, but that's got a closed back. It doesn't look the same as the one. No, you can pop the back open and the turret comes out, and you can have people. I, I, sta- I stand correct. It is a thing of indisputable magnificence. Yeah, the claws go large. up and bend, and yeah, yep. Okay, shall we do some podcasting? <laughs> <laughs> shall we? Shall we? Shall we talk about what we're supposed to be here to talk about? Um, mm, we'll be fine. back in a second then uh, with hardware. If you'd like to support the AV Forums podcast on a regular basis, then why not become a patron? Head over to patreon.com forward slash AV Forums to sign up. You can also make a one-off donation through the Super Chat or via streamlabs.com forward slash AV Forums. All donations help us to improve the website and the podcasts. Thank you to all our supporters. I did see a donation pop up on screen, so apologies yes. I didn't grab that. Um, but Stuart will, and he'll put. Uh, no, I read it. Um, it's for me. One. Yeah. So we'll we'll come back to that one. So uh, so if you hang around, um, thank you very much for your donation. It is appreciated. We will come back to you in a second to uh, to answer that question. We need to get through some of the news because we've got lots to talk about in terms of hardware this week, um, and lots of it is news. So first of all, um, you'll be aware that I did the LG G1 OLED Evo uh, TV review a f- couple of weeks back now, and uh, I mentioned it on the podcast that the brightness for the filmmaker mode in HDR was slightly lower than the cinema mode. Now, they're supposed to be the same in terms of uh, peak brightness. So LG uh, engineers caught up on that, and they have fixed the issue. I uh, got an email on Monday morning saying that they have fixed that issue, and it will be in the next firmware update for the G1. So uh, so I've got to say, I, didn't, I pointed out in the review, but I wasn't expecting anything to happen. So the fact that they took that on board, fixed the issue, and then let me know on Monday, and it's going to be the next firmware. So well done, LG, for doing that. It's uh, It means now that filmmaker mode is going to be the same brightness as cinema, and the settings video that I took a lot of time uh, putting together and editing this week, and so it is now wrong. <laughs> well, but, you're just a victim you know, of your own success, Phil. Yeah, well. That's probably the best way to, to motivate yeah, Well, yourself. somebody, I think L, it was LG today, called me a guru on, uh, on I think it was Twitter. I was like, oh. Okay, that's one step below as it um, evangelist. <laughs> Is it? No, no. I th- I think that I honestly the connotations to being a brand evangelist. Are, evangelist. <laughs> I mean, you know that there's. Yeah, that's not. I, I think um, it's a guru is 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 is, is more <laughs> desirable than evangelist in this one. Yeah, so, I wasn't uh, expecting that either. But anyway, uh, so the fix. That's thanks very much for doing that, LG. It's a, I'm sure customers will appreciate the fact that. Uh, uh, the, yeah, um, yeah, good. Right, let's move on from that and uh, let's go to some solutions for HDMI 2.1 problems. Um, there have been numerous problems uh, highlighted, Steve, recently. Uh, Den and Morantz were the first ones to put their hands up, basically, and say that the uh, the chip that they were using in the, the latest uh, um, products for 21, uh, 2021 did have an HDMI 2.1 bug, but they have now come up with a solution. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> they've uh, they come up with a, a hardware solution it's, it is free of charge though isn't it so that i guess that's, uh, that's a positive but um um you got to add i see do you know what phil can you do this because i haven't bothered reading the article <laughs> <laughs> i really haven't bothered <laughs> right well I, there's a I lot... admire the honesty there yeah well you know the running <laughs> i was going to talk about it and then i thought you know what I can't be bothered to bullshit this. Uh, you can do it. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you've had the running order since Monday. So, you know. Uh, yeah, I didn't look at the running order until about five minutes before we started. Yeah. Professionalism as always. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> I've uh, approached this with a limited amount of preparation this week, or but that's mostly the case every week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Den and Marantz, they have come up with a solution, which is basically a little box that's going to go between... Uh, your your source and the AV receiver or the AV receiver and your, and, and your source and uh, and the display. And it basically gets around the issue that, that was there for the HDMI 2.1 bug. The problem is that you put anything in the chain, what do you get? Latency. Latency. And, and they're talking about this as a gaming fix. Um, I think the gaming fix is that you connect your uh, gaming device to your, your HDMI 2.1 TV and use EARC for your audio back to your 
receiver. That's the best route, basically. Um, for those that have got one HDMI going up to the TV because they put the buried HDMI in the wall and the TV's wall mounted and so on, this will be a solution, but I, I, you know, it's going to be some latency in there as well. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Obviously, there's owners on the forums. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll wait to see what happens in the owners threads. And uh, we still get some of these new receivers in for review as well. So I'll make sure that Steve uh, gets one of these for review. And so they're going to basically to send it out to people. You basically go it's free, free of charge. Send me free one charge. and they send so, it to you. Yeah, well, you've got answer. You've got a questionnaire to do. And obviously you put your serial number in and so yeah, on, yeah, I'd yeah, imagine, yeah. And, uh, and then they'll send the, the item out to you. So even if you don't need it and you have one of these uh, AV receivers, I would still apply for the box, even if you just put it away somewhere for safekeeping, because when it comes to selling it on, um, you know, you, you, yeah, you you, you'll get your money's it. worth if you've got the box. Yeah, it gets around the issue. So, uh, you know, it's a way of getting around it. But I've got to say, it's um, it, it's probably not an ideal solution. The problem is, it's a silicon on chip issue, and there's no way they can change the silicon on chip on products that exist. Uh, there's absolutely unless no they way. actually recall the product, change the HDMI yeah. board, and then and that would be do, very expensive. They're not going to do that because it's not worth. It's not worth. It's not the, I mean, the viable. rework alone is just 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 yeah. makes my my teeth itch thinking about it. Yeah. So yeah, it's so it's not uh, an elegant solution, but it's a solution. It's a solution. Yeah. They said that we're going to find a solution, and they have. Yeah, um, you know, it, it's uh, it is what it is basically. It's the perils of early adoption. Did uh, Yamaha have the same problem on their AVR? Yes, well? they, yes, because they use the they use, they use the same uh, silicon on chips. So but they announced a similar yeah. solution. <laughs> not at the moment, but they have said that they were going to try and fix it. Um, the the thing I I I was I thought that the X8500 from Denon was going to have a whole new board it is. Uh, upgrade. Yeah. So, you know, obviously that will will have... Uh, One would hope that when they do that upgrade, they it, don't it use works. the same chip yeah. set they used. Yeah. But yeah, but to do that for everything that they've sold um, and to recall it, and so it's just it's not economically viable for them to do that. So this is a solution. Um, but like I say, if it if it's a gaming solution you're looking for, connect your console to your HDMI 2.1 TV and then route your audio EARC. The problem solved, basically. Um, the other update was that Arcam and uh, JBL have confirmed that they will do an HDMI 2.1 update for uh, the AVR 10, 20, 30, and AV40. That's the Arcams, and then the JBL synthesis the stp55 and the sdr35 which is the av receiver and the processor uh they will get upgraded for 2.1 but they haven't said exactly how they're going to do that but the uh they will do an upgrade for that so that is coming as well so that was two of the updates in the well, that's all the news actually um well, so well, let's... Uh, there's there is the uh oh, no you're right that is all the news <laughs> yep that is there was something no, no, there was, yeah. So I've mentioned the Cynthia's products there. They will be now available as separate devices. So in the yes, past, when, when you bought what, a system, cool. you bought everything. You bought the speakers, the amps, the processor. It was all, it was all purchased as a system. Uh, you can now buy these things uh, individually, separately. And basically, the STP55 from JBL, it's basically the AV40 from Arkham. So it's the same architecture. There's a few little tweaks here and there. Uh, they changed the the dark inside, so it's a it's a higher quality dark inside, and there's also a 16 channel process uh, algorithm or whatever. Um, not an algorithm, but it's uh, it's Harman's 16 channel processing, uh, which is on there as well, which is not on the Arcam. Um, so that's that like what, the lexicon processing. We yes, used to have it is. Yeah. yeah. So it, it differentiates itself that way. Um, it's also prettier, if I'm being honest. It looks very much like Actually, the Lindorf. I have to say, that's a, that's a nice piece. It looks of like a Lindorf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. looks like a Lindorf with a glass front. Yeah, like that. But, um, and that's fair enough, because the Lindorf is mighty pretty in its own right. Yes. So. Um, and th there is a bit of a price hike uh, compared to the AV40. So I think the processor's a uh, grand and a half or two grand more expensive um, compared to the Arcam. So uh, I hopefully we'll have that in for review in the next two or three weeks. Uh, should we receive that. And Steve, you're getting the AVR, the SDR35, which is the same as the AVR30, AVR 30. <laughs> which you've already seen. So yeah, it'll be interesting to have a look at those because they are available as uh, separate devices for the first time. So, uh, so yeah. 
interesting stuff. So that's the news. Um, let's move on to some stuff that we have been reviewing. And um, ultra shot through projectors, Steve, are going to be a real thing this year. It's a it's a growing market. It's one that High Sense has been in for a while. Sony have had their 4K projector for a very expensive 4K uh, shot through projector, but it's now. Uh, you know, moving out to other manufacturers, lots of Chinese brands getting in to this market as well, as well as the well-established brands like BenQ. So you've been having a look at two. Yep. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them and what makes an ultra shot through projector different from a shot through projector? The clue is in the name, but the ultra shot through projector uh, is has a very, very, very short throw ratio, like 0.25, um, which basically means you can project a very large image by putting it extremely close to the wall, you know, 10 centimeters, 50 centimeters from the wall, and you're getting 80 to 130, 140 inches. Um, so clearly from a point of view of space, that's a benefit because you don't have to have it across the room. Um, these, these ultra short throw laser projectors are really being uh, predominantly marketed as laser TVs. You quite often see them called that. Um, uh, now there's slightly disingenuous naming because they're not always, a lot of them, in fact, most of them don't have a tuner built in, so I wouldn't classify it as a TV. But the idea is that they are an alternative to a large screen TV. And as you said, Phil, quite a few manufacturers have, got, have moved into this marketplace in the last year. Uh, LG, Samsung, both moved in very recently. Sony have been there. Um, you've got BenQ and Optoma, of course, uh, and a, a new a new uh, a name in the, in the marketplace, Vava. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, Vava. I guess it must be that way, V-A-V-A. -A. It's all capital, so it might be V-A-V-A. -A. Um, but... Uh, They've, they've launched a ultra short laser projector, which um, uh, is the catchily named VA LT002. Uh, I think they just generally call it the VAVA or VAVA. Um, and there's also one I've seen from BenQ, and that's the V6050. So in general, they all, all these products, um, there might be a few exceptions, but generally these products share certain features. So obviously or ultra short throw, so you put them right up against the wall. They generally have a, a sound system built in, uh, essentially speakers at the front of the projector that fire towards you um, because they are trying to compete with the TV market. So they have a, a fairly decent sound system usually. I mean, most um, ordinarily, if someone said to me, this projector's got a speaker in it, I would say, turn it off and never, ever, ever, ever use it. <laughs> but um, in the case of these projectors, because they are designed to be alternative to TVs, they quite often sound pretty good. Um, in fact, the Vava sounded very good. Um, that had a really decent sound system and, and it looked in terms of its styling, not dissimilar to the Samsung ultra short throw laser projector that I reviewed, the Premiere that I reviewed um, last year. Um, so they have a sound system. They, they, they have the ultra short throw ratio. They have a laser light source, different kinds of um, laser light sources. I mean, the Samsung, for example, which is the most expensive of these options, uses an RGB laser, but um, a lot of them are just using a, a laser with a phosphor. Um, but they have a laser light source, so obviously you get all the benefits of that long lifespan, 20,000 plus hours, um, and fairly quick on and off and consistency. So again, it's trying to compete with the TV market space. Uh, some of them have uh, smart platforms built in. Again, trying to compete with TVs. And at least in the case of the Samsung, there's tuners built in as well. So you actually can call that a genuine alternative to a television because you can do all the things that a TV can do. Uh, now, obviously, there is uh, one caveat with this, which is, of course, they are, although they are pretty bright, a lot of these projectors, they are still projectors. They're never going to be as bright as a TV. They're never going to compete with a TV in terms of uh, HDR or in a room. You know, if you've got a lot of ambient light in the room, that's going to affect the, the image. But generally, they are a lot cheaper than buying a very large screen TV. So, you know, I mean, first of all, you won't be able to find a TV that's 130 inches in diameter. But if you're talking about sort of 80, 90 inch TVs, they can be pretty pricey. Uh, and these ultra short to laser projectors, you know, vary in price, but um, you're looking at the, the Vava is 2,799 quid. Uh, and then going up to the Samsung, which is 6,999. So expensive. I mean, that's the same price as a, a JVC N5, but it's obviously aimed at a different kind of marketplace. And of course, um, unlike the giant televisions, they're not there when they're not in use. They're not. They don't take up any space. Well, very little, limited space. Yes. Um, and uh, they, they, they. I mean, it's it's obviously a niche, but if you're looking, if you want big screen entertainment, and you don't necessarily want or can afford a very large TV, then this is definitely 
a viable alternative. Now, looking at the VAVA, for example, 2799 is, is, you know, it's not small change, but it's not a ridiculous amount of money. And it can give up to 130 inches. It's got a pretty good sound system. It's got a built-in smart platform, although I will say it's pretty useless because most of the apps um, are either not UK orientated or don't work. Um, having said that, you know, if it hasn't, you know, you can just plug in a Roku stick and you're, you're away. It's got three HDMI inputs. It supports ARC. Um, it's, it doesn't have tuners, as I said. So that's that's one you have to get like a PVR to go with it if you wanted to genuinely replace a TV. But overall, it's a pretty good project. You know, it's it's 2,500 lumens. It's bright. Um, it's got, uh, it's a DLP projector. So it's not native 4K, but you'd be hard pushed to notice a difference unless you're putting up test patterns. Um, it uses a color wheel. So if you suffer from rainbows, it's going to be an issue. Um, bear that in mind. It's Color gamut isn't as wide as it could be. Um, it can get a bit wider than X709, but it can't get up to DCI-P3. Well, that's just DLP. DLP. Yeah, I mean... Seven it, nine. Can't get ready, of course, to it, unless it's got the phosphor coatings, and at this price, it ain't going to have the phosphor coatings. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And, um, yeah, the, the only... The, the big, uh, you know, if you go for the Samsung, that's RGB laser. That one can do almost... Well, it can, yeah. do, uh, it can do Rec 2020. <laughs> it's enormous. But, yeah, we're talking about this price point. You know, it's obviously made to a price point. Um, but it would be, given what it's designed to do, it actually does it very well. And I thought it was a really good projector, considering um, I'd never heard of them before I did the review. It, uh, it also has a, a screen, but you reviewed it without the screen, didn't you? But it does you can buy it as a pack. It doesn't come with one. You can buy it on its own or with an ambient light rejection screen. They're, they're, they come as packages. Um, and I would say if you are buying one of these projectors, whichever brand you go for, um, yes, you could do it against a white wall. But... Um, you know, if you can invest in a screen, uh, you'll get you'll, you'll reap the rewards. And if you can invest in an ambient light rejecting screen, particularly you know if you're using it in in an average living room with say white walls or plenty of windows and that kind of stuff, again you will benefit from that, and it's worth investing in it because you know these are bright projectors, but they ain't going to be as bright as a TV. And um, you know you need to if you're trying to use it as an alternative to television, you need to bear that in mind. Um, the BenQ, the 6050, there's also uh, the V6000. They're identical, but the V6000 is white and the V6050 is black. Um, very similar to the Vava in most respects. Uh, again, they, they all have a similar kind of approach. So there's speakers at the front. The sound system on the BenQ isn't as good, I thought, as the one on the VAVA. Um, so swings and roundabouts, but the picture quality is a bit better. It's more accurate out of the box and it's got a wider color gamut. Still not it can get to 96% of DCI P3. So it does a pretty good job and it uses a laser plus phosphor rather than a laser. It uses a four segment color wheel. So again, rainbows might be an issue. It uh, hasn't got a smart platform built in, but as I said, that's easy to remedy. You just plug in a Roku stick and you're away. Um, no tuners. So again, you need to pair it with a PVR if you want to use it as a television alternative. Um, but again, really good, really good projector. Um, does is 3000 lumens, so it is very bright. Um, and the HDR actually is, is really good on it because it's got the extra bit of brightness in it. Um, again, um, they do sell them as a package with ambient light rejecting screens, which, as I said before, would be worth investigating if you're going to be using it in, a, you know, an average living room. Um, but uh, it delivered a, a really good picture, really good picture, detail, punchy, precise. As with um, as with uh, all DLPs, the motion handling is really good. Uh, they, they both technically support 3D, but I couldn't get the Viet Vava to work with my 3D glasses properly, but with the BenQ, no problem at all. Um, really good 3D. So 3D is still your thing. Um, the, 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 the BenQ in particular did fantastic 3D, low, really good depth, no crosstalk, very bright. Um, that was great. Um, HDR is good as well. Uh, and as I said, um, pretty accurate out of the box. That's a pretty, so, it's a pretty unique USP. Uh, sorry, that's doubling up on unique there, but it's a USP of quite some significance for a subset of our our users, it has to be said. I mean, there's still people who are quite animated about 3D, using my words carefully. So that's well, yeah, because the LG and Samsung options don't support 3D. Uh, I'm not sure about the Optoma. My, I think the Optoma do. So Optoma or BenQ if you want 3D as well. And obviously you can't buy 3D TV anymore. So that does give it a feather in its cap. Yeah. But it's projections, the only display technology still supports it, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 with the Vava, I only noticed it when I was looking in a side menu that had a 3D option. And I contacted them and said, does this support 3D? And they said, yeah. I said, well, you might want to make a bigger deal out of it because that's actually a big selling point with projector owners. Uh, having said that, though, as I said, I couldn't actually go into the work properly. So um, maybe it doesn't. Uh, maybe they it might need just to been, publicize it once it's just... Or it might not have been the... compatible with the glasses that I was using, which is possibly another issue. Um, 
it may be why they weren't making a big song and dance about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so they're they're um they're interesting products, and uh, I mean, it is a viable to if you if you're looking for a you want a big screen image, you don't necessarily want a traditional projector, uh, and you can't afford a very large TV, or you don't want a very large TV in your lounge. Um, these are these are a really interesting alternative. Yeah, and uh, sorry, I the just... BenQ by the way is three nine 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 nine. Uh, yeah. 3,999 yeah. So, I mean, it's been a bit bit slow burner, this market. Um, they have been around for a while, but now it re really seems to be taking off. And certainly Hisense have put a lot of marketing behind theirs this year and, and are certainly heading that way. So um, it looks like this this is going to be a popular segment of the market. Like Hisense say, have been banging that drum for about five years, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, they have, yeah. It's, it, it, you always got the higher end ones in the US, but I believe that the ones coming over this year are... Uh, very highly um, specced, so uh, it'll be worth hopefully having a look at that because Leeds mm. isn't too far from me, so I could pop down and it's one of these that you'd have to go and review because theirs has to use the screen, I think. It has to come with the screen. So Well, um, I'm, I'm glad that you talked about that. that. I've um, had in the last two weeks, two people, have uh, two companies have suggested a little spot of off-site testing for large and uh, quite impressive products. So yep. it is going to be part of our portfolio going forward. I mean, we will clearly delineate as ever when we're not reviewing in our own standard locations. Yep. Well, but it's going, to, yeah, it's going to give you us the scope to bring you products which we can't get to you any other way. Yeah, and, it, and that's going to happen, especially when we start getting things like... Um, you know, micro LED TVs. If it, if we ever get to review them, they're going to be so expensive and so valuable that that manufacturers are just not going to send them out. Other oh, Steve, you're going to have yeah. to go and and see them uh, at a facility somewhere. So as long as people understand that, that will always be in the review right at the start. That you know, this is the circumstances in which we've looked at the product. But I think people would rather have our input and measurements and so on from spending a day with something than not covering it at all. So. In that respect, uh, it's it's going to happen more and more, especially when we start getting 100, 110 inch screens. Um, <laughs> it's just not practical to to review so, those. Uh, I mean, the look any of other dislike on the courier's face trying to get it to you anyway, it's probably not worth it. You know, if someone can stare you to death, it's going to yeah. be when that happens. <laughs> if you're thinking of 110 or 120 or 130 inch screens, you should really be looking at these ultra short laser projectors because you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, look, no. It, it, as I say, they, it's an, in, an an extremely interesting niche which has just developed because, you know, in between the gap between, you know, at the moment partial vaporware and then partially very expensive solutions, these exist as a bridging point of ex, uh, you know accessible technology. As would you be interested in something like this? Yeah, uh, you know, shot through a projector. You got a white wall somewhere that you could use for it. I mean. It's not really set up fantastically for it because the wall that the TV is up against is pretty much the width of the TV. So you're not going to you're not going to get anything more because then you go into doorways. Um, but I've always wanted to convert the garage. And if I did, the, these kinds of things are going to are going to be what I look for. If, if, you know, if you said that to me five years ago, I'm going to turn my garage into a home cinema. I'd have been right behind you saying, "Yeah, Kaz, do that, do that." But nowadays, I'm like, I think I'd I'd, I'd want to. Well, you'd put a car in it. <laughs> <laughs> nowadays, I would. Yeah, absolutely. But four or five years ago, I, 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 it would have been a home cinema. Absolutely, uh, garage is a good good way to uh, add an extra room to the house, add some value, and add yeah. a, a cinema room. That's yes. how I'd sell it to the wife. I'm I'm not really getting very far on on cinema room. A, a family <laughs> room which just happens to have black walls. Media. Is what I'm yeah, it, uh, I, look, I mean, look, we all know that family life is a compromise. So you know, see, yeah. see, see, see what see what flies, cares. But you never yeah. know. One of these might be might be just the ticket. For Eight that. years and waiting. Eight years and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's a, it's it's a fantastic technology. The quality is just getting better and better every year, isn't it, Steve? So, you know, there's the, there's yeah. no excuse not to have a look at these if you're looking at a big screen uh, viewing experience. Um, certainly, try and get to see one or two uh, to make up your own mind, rather than right. Yeah, I mean, they're all me. DLP based. They're all DLP based, yeah. so there's obviously pros and cons with DLP, um, and you need to go with that, bearing that in mind. Um, black levels. Not great, but given the rooms they're being used in, not really an issue. Yeah, which, which is uh, why and, the, the suit, um, the and obviously rainbows room. can be a factor. Yeah, yeah. 
But the suit yeah. of room with white walls yeah, and white exactly. ceiling and you know, light yeah. bouncing all around. Uh, that's yeah, yeah, that's, that's, around. that's what they're perfect yeah, for. Yeah, absolutely. Right, um, so let's move on. Let's talk about a, a product which I thought was going to do a lot better than it actually has in terms of views of the review, Ed, mm. um, which is the Helm Audio um, device, which is, it has THX technology. Now, THX, I loved your uh, your little byline, by the way. <laughs> There's a name I've not heard. In them. <laughs> well, you know, it was too, it was too good an opportunity not yeah. to pass that up. So. Yeah, but, but you're right. Uh, THX, I mean, what do they do these days? Uh, since Razor uh, took ownership of the company, uh, they seem to be diversifying in lots of different ways. One of them is the AAA amp. Or is it double A amp? I'm not sure how you actually pronounce it. Um, um, yeah. It, but, well, it's either that or going, amp, which is, you know, <laughs> possibly not what they had in mind. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it, oh god, the cat nearly spilt my wine there. Sorry. Um, uh, this is I I understand, and the comments that have accompanied this review are completely legitimate because, for a significant chunk of people reading this, this is an incredible solution that has arrived a little bit late. What the helm is is an inline headphone amplifier. So it takes a 3.5 mil feed out from a laptop, tablet, or some other device that still has a 3.5 mil socket, and it runs it through a patented um, THX amplification technology, um, where you can control volume and so on and so forth. And then it will drive, and I have to be clear, I've tested it with a number of things. It will drive almost anything I can think of under a thousand pounds. Um, people have quite rightly pointed out that if you've got a phone, I mean, if you a couple of years ago where you know iPhones and and, and top line Android phones still had 3.5 mil sockets, this would have been manna from heaven. Um, as it is, it's a bit more limited, but if you're someone who works in an environment where your work PC will not let you install a driver for a US, a little dinky USB DAC or something like that, but it almost certainly will still have a 3.5 mil socket. Um, I have to be honest, uh, I have done my best to try and find a 3.5 mil socket of really poor quality, but really, uh, you know, I don't want to sound smug, there isn't really one of those in the house. But connecting it direct to my laptop, um, which isn't a cheap laptop, it did, it did cost two grand, but I mean, not, that, none of that really went on the audio side of things. Noise levels are on the floor. You've got gain for days, and it sounds genuinely good. Um, it's built like a truck, and obviously, unlike... Uh, the fun and games of USB DAX. It doesn't have any handshake or anything like that. It just works. I do feel that there's more to be had from this technology. If this were combined with a DAC front end, the digital decoding front end, this could be really something because the the actual performance on offer, you know, but bolting a pair of thousand pound Focal LSDs onto it, it sound it didn't sound all right it sounded genuinely good the the badge on this one reflects the fact that in 2021 the um applications for this are a little bit more limited than they were even a couple of years ago but if you have a three and a half mil socket out from a phone or even if you've still got the you know the el cheapo adapter usb adapter and you don't mind an extra thing connected to it for, 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 you know, for a longer journey. Um, also bearing in mind that as the Helm has its own battery on board, it's not going to drain the battery of your phone while it does it. As a, as a travel companion, um, uh, it would be potentially exceptional. And the prospect of bolting it into, um, you know, in, in the exciting world of international flights, if they happen again, the idea of bolting it onto in-flight entertainment and being able to drive a really spunky pair of headphones for an extended flight, uh, I'd suggest not using open back ones so the person next to you doesn't kill you. But, you know, same <laughs> principle applies. Um, nevertheless, I was, I, you know, the performance, I cannot stress how good it is. And I would absolutely love to see further implementations of the, uh, uh, sorry, Stuart had it up there. The Acromatic Audio Amplifier is what the AAA is and not 
aromatic audio amplifier, which is what I read it as initially, which <laughs> asked far more questions than it answered. <laughs> far, far more. Um, it's And I say it's £109. It, if you've got an application where you think it might work, honestly, as an, a piece of amplification, THX is really onto something here. Okay. Right, I think we've done with hardware. Um, but to go and read Ed's review of uh, if you're interested in in the headphone amplifier, it's uh, it's an interesting little device. So go have a read of that. Right, we're finished with hardware. We'll be back in a sec with our best of the month software. If you enjoy the podcast on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. If you're listening to the audio version, then please leave us a rating on your podcast app. We invite you to email questions and feedback to podcast at avforums.com and join in with this episode's discussion thread in the podcasts forum at AV Forums. Right, so let's move on to uh, software. And like I say, it's, uh, it's the end of the month. Uh, so thank God for that. I wanted April over and done with really quick. We need to get to me. So it's the end of the month. We're going to do our best of, so the best album playlist final, as well as our films and discs and TV shows. Ed's going to kick us off with uh, his selection. So album first. Yes, um, I couldn't not do this album because, I mean, Tom's actually not on the podcast as I'm saying this, but he would he, he, he would admit, appear and get angry if I didn't. The album of the month, uh, sorry, album of the week, is Dinosaur Junior. Uh, I've gone. Uh, I've lost my lost my train of thought completely. Sweep it into space. It's the fifth or sixth Dinosaur Junior album. Now, Dinosaur Junior are have been around for donkey's years, um, but they have changed their lineup more times than uh, I've um, changed uh, my underwear. Uh, but the original lineup has been back writing albums for the last two or three years so this is the the, the the second of this second phase of those um it's crunchy indie rock and roll music but what has always set dinosaur junior apart um is that they do good hooks good riffs and they never overstay their welcome i won't lie this is not absolutely that should be a lesson in life <laughs> no it, well no you're absolutely right but let's face it the number of people who, who firmly believe that they've got a concept album in them and they really don't dinosaur junior just don't do that um uh, and you could, you could say they're timeless as in they sound the same as they did no y yes if you're looking for giant you know this is we're not talking about bowie here we, they do not reinvent themselves every decade <laughs> to stay relevant, but they do produce some. They're, and they're, they're maddening songs because you listen, this is fine. And then you find yourself humming it under your breath. And that's got to count for something. I would also say, um, I'm really annoyed that Tom isn't here for this, uh, but the uh, quality of this album, uh, I haven't bought the vinyl copy. Um, but it is on Cobuzz as a 2496 stream. It sounds absolutely blinding. Um, it's a lovely example of, uh, if you like, it's it's a rough and ready piece of music. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an indie band going at it, but the, the care and attention that's gone into how it's recorded is really lovely. It's a lovely sounding thing. Just put it on. Don't necessarily sit there bolted to it. First time out, just put it on, attend to something else. And I, I I, genuinely feel it will get under your skin. And I'm not just saying that to appease Tom, actually, because I was like, oh, yeah, Dinosaur Junior. I, I've enjoyed this more than some of the more recent efforts. I think it's well worth a look. And as I say, it's on all the major streaming services. So if you're subscribed to any of those, um, it's not going to cost you anything to try it out. So I would heartily suggest that you do. Um Vinyl release of the month, I can be a little bit more enthusiastic about uh, London Grammar. Um, there's an element of audiophile catnip to London Grammar. You know, it's a spacious, arty presentation. Um, the lead singer is not unattractive. It's got all the things that audiophiles like. Uh, but nevertheless, this album, Californian Soil, it's got some genuinely good moments. I won't lie, it also has one or two moments that I just don't think work in the accepted sense of the word. 
but um, the title track and a number of the others are a bloody good listen. The reason this has got the vinyl release of the month is for two specific reasons. The first is it is a good pressing. It has artificial crackles on some tracks, which as you might imagine from the premise of listening to it on a turntable are not ideal, but they're only brief and, and fleeting. The other thing is this is a really bold, I say really bold, it's certainly an ambitious move. The sleeve is recycled. Oh, now he turns up after I finish talking about the, um, the bloody uh, dinosaur duty thing. The sleeve is all recycled. It doesn't come in a shrink wrap because they don't want plastics in it. Uh, the vinyl is made out of recycled plastic. And I won't lie, that alarmed me because I thought, mm, I don't know how well that's going to work. It's a good pressing. It's nice and quiet. My copy is flat. Um, and there, there's no bugbears there. Uh, there are environmental consequences to physical media in the same way that running a gigantic server farm for streaming audio and video has environmental consequences too. <laughs> it's nice to see at least a little bit of attention being paid to this. I was, I, I was impressed at the effort they've gone into. Um, if you're looking for music that's truly going to change your world, I don't believe that London Grammar is ever going to do that. But it's a, it's a lovely album to listen to. And if you are a turntable user, I think it's a, a, a fine example. Um, finishing off a playlist of the month, because I know we've got Oscars to get through. Um, Cobuzz, and I keep coming back to Cobuzz. I'm sorry. Uh, at the moment, they're putting the effort in for playlists and nobody else's. Cobuzz has got three playlists running concurrently for the best of, because we're in 2021. They've got, um, so actually there's four, sorry. They've got the best of 1971, which is for Steve. Best of 1981, best of 1990. And best of 2001. Um, uh, actually, of the lot of them, 1981. What a year! There's so many yep, different fantastic. things going. So many different things going on in that. Um, a really good listen. Um, lots of stuff that you'd forgotten had come out, and so on and so forth. It's several hours long. Put it on and just revel in what an absolutely banging year of music. I want you to listen to it, but obviously I don't have Cuba, so I, I couldn't do that. But um, BBC Four are doing. Uh, one note, just yeah. sorry to cut you off. Do remember, sound is so sound double i z dot com. Uh, we can stick the podcast link into, sorry, li li the playlist link into the podcast chat and you can convert it into the streaming service of your choice. Okay. Um, so we can do it that way around. One last tiny piece of music news whilst we're doing, um, we're just doing this finish off. Um, Spotify increased their prices this week, pretty much at no notice uh, for both the family plan and the personal plan. Um, perhaps not unexpected in the light of the fact that, you know, there's the news of Lossless coming in and suddenly the founder... Uh, Trying to buy Arsenal. Buy Arsenal, <laughs> you know, as you do. If you are upset about this, and, you know, we, we are in the I middle of some, know about it, Ed. some quite tight times. Um, well, yes, I'd say they haven't been entirely open about this. There was a press release earlier from the CEO of Deezer um, saying, we're not changing our pricing. So for uh, if you just need an MP3 you know, compressed level streaming service, Deezer is now really good value. I would argue it's slicker than Amazon. Um, and it's not Amazon, if you have hang-ups about that, which to an but extent do, I do. Does Deezer work with uh, CarPlay and so on, Apple CarPlay and so on? Uh, it works perfectly with Android, yeah. It's, it's the only reason why I go with Spotify. Well, Spotify. no, no, no. Uh, uh, Deezer works beautifully uh, over the Android system, so I can't see, I can't, given that Android is rough and ready compared to Apple, I can't see it being another way. And that also the Deezer lossless tier, um, it doesn't have high res compared to some of the other things, but uh, it works brilliantly. And I've, I've, I've reviewed Deezer for the site before. If you put the time into listening into music that you enjoy into Deezer for the first week or two, Deezer's flow system is the only system out there which is as good as Spotify's learning algorithm. It just needs a little bit more time to get learning. So, how, yeah. How much is know. Spotify now? Uh, that's a fantastic question. Uh, I wish I, I believe uh, the family plan's certainly gone up from fourteen ninety nine a month to sixteen ninety nine a month. I think it might be another quid on um, uh, the normal single user platform one. So nine ninety nine to ten. Oh no, no, it'll remain at nine ninety nine. So oh, okay, sorry, um, but it's just, well, just premium remains at nine ninety nine. It's just the family, the family plans that have increased then. So. And pre premium student is going up a quid from four ninety nine to five ninety nine. 
Fair enough. Well, there you go. Okay, my mistake. So, you know, if you just if it's just Todd you on your Todd, no chain. Well, yes. Okay, Steve, just just <laughs> rub in your loneliness. Um, the uh, it's more if you've got the family plan things. I believe Deezer is now undercutting Spotify on that. Right. Okay. Uh, what I was going to mention is when you mentioned the playlist of eighty one, seventy one, and so on. Uh, BBC Four have been doing Top of the Pops, but they've been doing it on year specific. And it's been excellent because there's lots of tracks turning up that I completely forgotten about. Um, you know, they don't turn up on the usual compilation al albums or playlists, so and so. If you're a fan of the, those decades, um, it's worth dipping into the, the mm -hmm. top of the pop stuff. Um, Did you see the levels of outrage on Twitter when, following the death of Prince Philip, um, some of the top of the pop stuff was cancelled? They that was the angriest group of people, even more so than the East Enders group. When uh, then, um, so you know, repeats of forty-year-old shows. <laughs> Well, you know, they, they, obviously they they wanted their fix, and they were very upset when it, it wasn't provided yeah, to them. So, absolutely. right. Yeah. Well, like you say, we've got the Oscars to get get through. So before we do that, we're going to do our uh, best of the months. So, um, film of the month. Uh, easy for me. Didn't see any. Steve, what's your film of the month? I probably would go with Palm Springs because I really enjoyed it. Um, Sound of Metal was an excellent film too, but you know. Not exactly a laugh per minute. I, I mean, I think, I think per minute. Says the person who's going to watch Irreversible tonight. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I was, I, I didn't realise how much I wanted to watch a, a fun, clever, entertaining comedy, and Palm Springs is all of those things. I love Palm Springs. It was great. It was, it was just great. It was mm. so much fun, and it's not often that you can just and set me off on a on a time loop <laughs> season of films. <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were going to say a time loop. <laughs> <laughs> and to feel a bit like that towards the end no, to, be, to be honest to be honest steve if you'd said i haven't read the podcast running order because i was back in 1835 changing <laughs> I'd, I'd have had more time for you to be fair you know yeah, so, yeah. Uh, no, so, that... so happy birthday sorry, happy death day happy death day <laughs> happy death day to you uh source code edge of tomorrow groundhog, uh, groundhog day groundhog day obviously um palm springs um the tiny map of tiny perfect things yep i did uh, enjoy that i have to say after yeah, no, that was a, great I, film. I thought that was a nice little film <laughs> yeah a nice little film too so I, i've had a fun uh, a fun time watching all these time loop films okay oh, good stuff go. uh, so was that your favorite as well tom was it palm springs oh um i i've got a i've got to go with promising young woman which um i think i described in the you did in you the did thread say it was oh excellent. yeah I've, I've spoken on here about it before but um i i described it recently in the thread as like uh, uh an imperfect but excitingly venomous movie it is uh it's it's just razor sharp um and even though the direction is a bit i don't know it seems harsh to call it like by the numbers but it, it's the direction is not as good as the script, hence Give it the... A, it's her first film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she got Oscar nominated. Exactly. I would, I would also, if you, this film genuinely seems to have a degree of cut through, um, my, uh, it, when I go and collect my son from school, uh, my son's best friend, uh, I generally collect him from school at the same time as his father collects his best friend. And we give them 20 minutes of hooning around at the play park to burn some energy off. Which and trainers he, are you wearing? It, it depends. The trainers, the reason I have eight pairs of trainers, Kaz, is to colour match. There's only seven else. in the week. Mm -hmm. Well, I know it's just to colour match what I'm wearing at the time. I mean, the yellow ones aren't going to see much use until it's t shirt season because I don't have any yellow jumpers. <laughs> but I digress. I, 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 I can count nine behind your head. No, well, I can't. I'm glad because... that, that they're actually there in pairs because you put a photograph up on Instagram earlier on and it was only the left feet. Yeah, that's because I was being <laughs> amputated. No, um, no, sorry, to drag this back. My, 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 uh, my colleague, my, my son's uh, best friend's dad, uh, he absolutely raved about Promising Young Woman. We genuinely loved it. Um, so it it's one of those things where it's, you know, I, I, I'm, always, I'm always alert when someone who lives outside of our peculiar little bubble actually starts raving about some, uh, some there content. Were, yeah, there were some really, really interesting comments on the thread about it, um, including like comments from people saying like, I I watched it and I, I kind of enjoyed it. And then I talked to my partner afterwards and I realized that actually, wow, this is a big deal. That's really nice. No, and, it is. Um, oh, no. I mean, it, it, it touches on a number of um, yeah. very raw, I, very I saw real it once issues. for review and then I watched it again. 
um, with my wife and uh, her response was thank you for showing this to me which is like this this is this movie is a big deal it's um it's not it's not perfect but it, not love it's... and monsters yeah <laughs> I enjoyed love and monsters <laughs> ah oh my can we can we not can we not I liked Love and Monsters as well, as you would know if you read my review. Anyway. Well, I didn't even bother reading the, the running orders. I'm definitely not going to be reading your review. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least skip to the score. Um, at least was, you're honest about it, Steve. At least you're it honest. It was fine. <laughs> it, was, it was a fine way to pass an hour and a half. Good on them for watching uh, How to Train fun, Your Dragon. charming lead, and it had uh, monsters and uh jk simmons pops up in it no not jk simmons um michael, michael rooker? rooker and I, yeah. I like michael rooker so you know so do I. he should have fun. been in it like if they were going to do a zombie land takeoff they should have just gone for it and put michael rooker in the whole thing because he was the best thing about that movie um but yeah it was quite the, funny when the old just, the kid in it was jay baruchel from from how to train your dragon it was the same character <laughs> he had the same character beats Watch the opening of Love and Monsters and the opening of How to Train Your Dragon. It is the same film. That is my piece said. My film of the month is Promising Young Woman. <laughs> what, about, what about Godzilla versus Kong? Yeah, That was awesome as well. Super fun, <laughs> but not, you know, greatly enjoyable, as was Palm Springs. Greatly enjoyable, um, but, but didn't afterwards get me thinking. Hmm. That was an interesting bit. It was just like a disturbing trend amongst our nation's youth. My son and all of his friends are Team Godzilla, which I find. I mean, you know, they're, they're clearly nihilists and just want the world to burn. Um, <laughs> so we need to be careful of that in the future. Just so you know, I'm, and it's team, not just... I'm team Godzilla, all the way. Yeah. I He's mean, nice just guy. because I think that Kong had the character arc, and I absolutely loved that in that movie where people seem to think there were no character arcs. There um, is no character arc. There is. Kong. <laughs> yeah, it's Kong's character arc. He's Rocky in the movie. He's the underdog who goes and learns his special skill. Goes the distance. Loses, loses his first fight, has to travel and accomplish a, a quest, gets a special <laughs> weapon, comes back. He's, you know... Yeah, where did that been... special weapon come from? Who made that? Amazing, right? come on, Special come weapon. On, so but, good. But character arc in Godzilla vs. Kong, exactly what you'd expect from something like Arnie. Right to him waking up in the morning and scratching, scratching his, his ass, <laughs> having a shower. It could have been Gibson and Lethal Weapon. You know, it's a it's a Perfect. character arc. It just doesn't have a human in it. It's it's. I'm fine with that. Anyway, sorry, I'm sorry I got us distracted there. I'm just was I'm flagging up a problem I think with our nation's children, but apparently you all have the same problem as well. <laughs> yeah. So it, we're all a cool guy, but Godzilla is my BF. Yeah. <laughs> right, Kaz, what was yours? Uh, uh, yeah, Sound of Metal for personal reasons. Um, you know, I, I've got a. a... What, you're a rock drummer, are you? No, no. Uh, I mentioned when I reviewed it, I've got a, a deaf uncle, and it, it was very. Right. Okay. I'm going to say I was, I was going to say it's eye opening, but that's probably not quite the um, the right sense. Um, ear closing it's, film. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, it. It just it it resonated for me because, as I say, I don't think I really understood. Um, the that it isn't a, a quick fix even with the best of technology so um, yeah yeah that was the bit that really think, was eye-opening for me was yeah. um the sound design's amazing uh and yeah when he actually gets the implants you realize that uh obviously you know if you're profoundly deaf and always have been it must be amazing to hear anything but if you've already heard before yes not had normal hearing initially then it's it's a crap solution <laughs> yeah it is it just doesn't it, it doesn't they really do a brilliant job at that party where you realise that you just can't I when you've got hear normal hearing, you can you can tune out stuff and you can focus on one voice or uh, different conversations. But when you just got this massive no. information being bombarded onto the brain, you can't do anything no. with it. It's really good. It's uh, to be choice. honest, it, 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 I'm, I'm the guy at parties. We're um, with um, yeah, me too. What you're doing re- weirdly, you know, being tenuous for a moment. Uh, People often sort of come back. Why, you know, why does this speaker cost this much money, and so on and so forth? What you actually, what in some regards, what you're dealing with there is, if you like, a refined version of of the difference between hearing aids and natural hearing. The ability of some of these more high end devices to just reconcile the amount of information they're delivering at you, so you yourself have a fighting chance of reconciling it, 
is 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 not insubstantial and 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 this is a massive technological boundary with uh, hearing implants of various different persuasions is just being able to refine this information before it's you know systems that have been had millions of billions of years of evolution um, can, uh, can 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 get it done. So yeah, uh, I haven't watched it yet um, because I you know I generally just get distracted and watch something which is thirty five years old and got more explosions in it. So sorry, <laughs> that's fine. I did. I was going to say I watched the Monster Squad on Amazon. Speaking of old films that distracted me, <laughs> and uh, Wolfman's got you it. Um No, it wasn't as good. As <laughs> <laughs> At least you're it's, honest. It's all right. It's okay. It's 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 you know it's Shane Black and it's perfectly entertaining and the kids are all right. But um, and there's still some funny lines in it. And Wolfman uh, does still have nards. Have nards, yes. But uh, <laughs> but obviously they had to skirt around the fact that they didn't have permission from Universal to use all their monsters, so they had to make them look a little bit different and all this sort of stuff. But it's okay. It's, it's a fun movie. Okay. Plus, uh, I, lo I love the bit when they have to get a virgin and, the, and his sister goes, oh, I am a virgin. Well, apart from Steve, but he doesn't count. Because <laughs> <laughs> it does count! <laughs> so, yes. Well... On that okay. show, yeah, let's move on to disc of uh, of the month. Then um, I'll do it in the same order. So, Steve, what's yours? Um, I'm trying <laughs> to think what I bought this month actually. Kaz, help me out here. Well, I mean, apart from Donnie Darko, which only arrived on Saturday, and I haven't did watched you, yet. Did you buy Battle reason. Battle Royale? No, I didn't. Did you buy uh, Dawn of Justice IMAX? I did, but I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> so only, only, arrived, only arrived today. I ordered that from Ten America. Commandments. Uh, no, I don't. I'm interested in that. Wonder Woman eighty four. Yes, that's terrible. <laughs> but does it look really good? Yeah, it that's looks no, great, no, no. We but... shouldn't be choosing <laughs> okay. discs on because it only why, why did Steve them? buy it then? Oh. <laughs> right, right. You're, you're just discounting ninety percent of our audience by saying that, Ed. Because uh, well, I just it just infuriates me because they'll never learn. Soul in 4K. Yeah, who cares about audios and visuals? I've got that. Yes. <laughs> well, You're that... Right. okay. In that case, soul, soul, and soul. I'll go with soul. Okay, I did my best there. Okay, thank, thank stuff. you, Kaz. How's your disc? <laughs> well, it should have been Donnie Darko, shouldn't it? All the way. And I really yeah. enjoyed watching the director's cut. Um, but I, I can't. You can't. I mean, all of that hoo ha until they finally got around to saying they'll be. You know they're looking into it, and we'll look into the best way of dealing with it, which is, I'm guessing, a replacement scheme. I suppose um, I could watch the direct theatrical cut on my Oppo because apparently it plays all right on. Yeah, that. apparently <laughs> it plays on on some. Uh, for those who don't know, the it, it appears to be the majority of incidents reported on Panasonic's, um, and what happens is on the direct cut, it's fine. I mean, I noticed one audio drop, but it, it's. Anyway, on the theatrical cut, the whole thing plays with like a frame latency, like um, like it's missing a frame. So all of the words and the dialogue and the movement are matched, but it's very staccato. So when people talk and move, it's kind of missing a frame. So um, it looks very odd, but apparently it's only on, well, majority on Panasonic's, a few other reports of of others but i'm wondering if it's a question of 23.9 whatever it is frames versus 24 exactly I, i'd be surprised because this is a david mckenzie one that he's been working on so i'd be surprised if they've made that kind of mistake well they made some it's, kind of mistake yeah i mean it's it <laughs> odd and it's odd, it's odd that it's on um it's, it's odd that it's depending on players as well yeah that's that's why i was making me think maybe some players can handle 24p exactly 24 maybe, maybe and maybe some players i don't know just i'm just guessing i don't know the reason uh, just purely yeah. spitballing on my part i was just trying to work out why it would play on some players and not on other players so it doesn't make a lot of sense well so yeah someone did suggest that the an alternative solution would be to get the manufacturers to do a firmware update um because apparently a lot of the panasonics haven't had one for since 2019 I think yeah, most players haven't. haven't had a firmware update in years it's, yeah. pro it's probably because they don't need a firmware update it, it always reminds me of that time I was at Bristol and these two guys came in Bristol Sound Vision these two guys come into the Onco stand when I was standing talking to Mark Cheffins and uh, the guy says uh, so this this new uh, AV receiver when can I get my first firmware upgrade he said firmware upgrade for what <laughs> what's wrong with it? 
Yeah, so I mean, be, society now is like, oh, it, we, it needs to have new firmware. Does it? Really? Yes, yes, I can, I can see that. I mean, it's uh, who, who knows what it's down to. They'll obviously make a proper announcement, but it was a bit difficult because uh, there were, uh, I think, it's three days where people were wondering what they were going to hear back because it, you know, it's not a, it's not a cheap set. Yeah. Well, I mean, at so, least they've, um, they've acknowledged the acknowledged it so it'll be interesting to see what the solution is yeah we just i'm assuming they'll replace the disc yeah i was also asked the differences between the theatrical and director's cut we touched briefly at the beginning uh basically the director's cut is uh about i think half an hour longer 20 minutes longer maybe but it's also re-edited in a slightly different order of scenes and with the original music choices song choices that um the director which kelly wanted but, but he didn't have the rights to when he did the theatrical cuts. Uh, there is a debate as to which is better, and uh, probably most purists think it's the um, theatrical cut because it is the most elusive and it, it is a, a mystery, a dark mystery, which is probably best served in that kind of Lynchian way, um, personally, and hopefully for a few people out there as well. Uh, I prefer the director's cut just because... Um, as much as I like David Lynch, sometimes it's also nice to be able to understand. Um, and, and the movie doesn't spoon feed you. So that's the difference for those who want to know. So that was your disc, was it? Disc of the month? I wasn't actually. I was just going <laughs> to no. say it should, <laughs> been, it should have been the, the, <laughs> the disc of the month by far, but I never got to the end of the sentence because we got slightly sidetracked. Fair enough. It goes to. Um, uh, the IMAX, uh, I'm going to call it the IMAX edition, sue me, of uh, Batman versus Superman, which looks oh, you'd never um, guess that. stunning in 4K. <laughs> Although it's apparently today Warner announced that um, it's dead. The Snyder no Burst. more. No more Snyder. It. Until Until tomorrow, AT&T and... Until AT&T, they tap, 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 hang on a second. (laughs) (laughs) Say, oh, Um, by the way. Kaz has bought 40,000 copies of this disc on his own, (laughs) so, you know... Well, it's funny because I, I resurrect Zack Snyder. I ordered it from America, and then I got a notice from Amazon saying your copy is shipped. And I was like, "Oh, sh-. anyway." I ordered it from America because I realised it had already come out there, and it wasn't coming out here until twenty till this Monday. Mm. And then they shipped it on the tenth of April from America. Yeah. Oh, excellent! Disappeared two weeks later. <laughs> oh, really? No, it disappeared. Disappeared. It was sent by DPD, and it just never turned up. So they yeah. refunded me, and I on Monday, and I just bought the UK disc. The UK and arrived. Yeah today so um yes I was <laughs> to be fair well, i have tried uh, u.s shipping at the moment i've tried to order a t-shirt a, a t-shirt i desperately want from a company in the united states it can't be had from any other location um and bless them the first one just vanished into thin air and they've you know at no charge they're trying again and that one is now overdue as well so, uh, I well, think I was surprised because it was with a DPD, you know, with the courier. I thought, well, mine, no, mine was, mine was, mine was, mine was just a postal service. No, no, mine was DHL, and it was tracked until it hit the UK, and it just vanished. <laughs> I had the similar. I had a similar experience shipping two things from from the Far East, both of which games merchandise, weirdly enough, but both of which never showed up. Mm. Lion-O and it Ch- was not. It was not <laughs> Lion-O. It was. It was Panthro. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, as long as it's, it's, not, Wiley, as long it's not Wiley Kiss and Wiley Cat. That's fine. <laughs> Just a few friends of mine see. have uh, bought car parts from uh, the likes of Wish and, and Alibaba or whatever you call it. One of them had, had bought the um, it's 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 like a plastic uh, that you put into onto your dashboard. So it's a different color. So it'd be the same color as your car, and you put it on the dashboard and, and so on. Um, so it was supposed to be four meters long. You got it, and it was four cents. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> paid twenty five pound, and it came. It six weeks to come, and it was this. Long. <laughs> it might um, fit in the uh, DeLorean, the one yeah, one yeah. to eight DeLorean. Yeah, yeah maybe. if he's going to tear apart a scale model of a uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Someone well, mentioned yeah. it in the thread, but I, I saw it posted on Twitter. I'm not sure if it's legit, but um, it looks like. Warners are going to be bringing ben out. Her, ben yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. yeah, yeah. That wristwatch is about. never going to look that. I, I hope it's in, awesome. I hope it's in its correct aspect ratio. Two point seven six to one point three three to one. Snyder ratio. 
Why is Thunderpants you, now you showing? Won't, you won't like it, Kaz, because it'll be all black bars on your TV. It'll just be this little slit. Slither across the side. Well, isn't, isn't there that Family Guy joke? Where's the, the, wide, the ultra widescreen oh, version yeah. of Lawrence of Arabia? And it's just this slit. <laughs> so I, I watched um, How the West Was Won, you know, which is 2.89 to 1. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like... Yeah. Yeah, but even on a big screen. That's it's, uh... weird, it's weird though because obviously the ca- the Cinerama cameras that they they used for that no close ups, so everything's. Oh, it's amazing! I, honestly, I I watched it um, and I listened to the commentary track, um, and what a bugger it must have been making three cameras yep. in sync. Yeah, you can't do a close up. Everything has to be at least a medium yep. shot. Weighs a ton. You had to watch everyone's eye lines because it was so many times we thought they're not looking at each other. And because they basically had to look, if you looked at each other on, on the Cinerama screen, it didn't look like you were looking at each other. So you had to look away from the person. And sometimes they got it right and sometimes they got it completely wrong. Yeah, It must have been a bug. And then you had to project it with three synchronized projectors. Yeah. Yeah. And it had, uh, there was like, I was watching simple things like dissolves. How do you do a dissolve on when three. you're dealing with three strips yeah. of film? <laughs> Yeah, it must have been an. Well, it, John Ford just said it was an absolute bastard to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks fantastic though. And uh, I think it was announced last week that the Cinerama Theatre in LA is closing down, unfortunately, because of the well, the co- yeah, the company COVID. that owns it went b- bankrupt. Yeah, which is a shame because that, that was a, fin- that was a out, fantastic. Well, thing. someone will buy that because it's a uh, it's a landmark. You know, it's it's, it's, a, it's a landmark, isn't it? Yeah. It is a landmark, but yeah, it was, I mean, watching it again, it was funny because there were some shots where you think, "Oh, they've they've clearly used some sixty-five mil there," because even though they've done a pretty good job of blurring out and getting rid of the joints, yeah, and they're quite often they would put a tree there, wouldn't they, to block it? You still yeah. see, but some shots you think there's nothing, there's no join there, and you realise that's because they've used sixty-five mil. They were they were also using oh sixty-five millimeter, um, you know, the same um, camera sixty-five system that used on Ben Hur for some shots where they couldn't use a three camera setup. Um, and they also use some old, you know, footage from previous Cinerama films. And there's one where they got some great shots from a plane. But why didn't they clean the lens on the front of the yeah. plane? The, you know, the canopy on the front of the plane because it's filthy and you can see all this dirt on it. I th- I thought anyway, it was say, an interesting I, experiment. I thought you were going to see how the best was one, and then suddenly there's a shot of the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, Cinerama, fantastic format. It's a oh, shame. No, that's it's, magnificent. Yeah. It's uh, it's died. Uh, and if you've got the Blu-ray, I'm not surprised it died. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, if you've got the Blu-ray, it, it is fantastic. The commentary track and stuff, but there's also a, a full showing of the movie where they try and give you the effect, smile shape, yeah, smile shape, and yeah, it's really interesting. A cracking bit of film history there, right? Where, where there's a good documentary on there actually about Cinerama, which is worth watching if you've got it because it tells you the whole history of Cinerama and it is really interesting. Yeah, because yeah. it comes from. I mean, the thing was I didn't realize was it came from World War Two. The guy who developed it originally. It was developed. He, he turned it into a training thing for machine gunners, plane you know, in, in air, aircraft, and they reckon he saved maybe two hundred thousand lives mm-hmm. um, by training training the gunners properly. And it's really clever technology with, with um, light sensors and everything, so they could shoot at the. They could learn the, the art of the, deflection the, shooting. It's one of the very first yeah. attempts to actually teach it. Yes. Yeah. Mm. What were we talking about again? Yeah. Uh, we're apparently on an AV podcast, but yeah, but we, we do we're, keep we're, getting we're, somewhat sidelined. Is, is it TV show now? Is it? Oh, I don't get to do my desk. That's a sad. All right, sorry, Tom. Tom. Sorry, we're off on so many different tangents. I don't know where the hell we are. So it's- <laughs> I'll be super quick. It's it's um it's a toss up between um Godzilla, which Sai reviewed for the website, which is looking lovely. I particularly like the header image that he's used, where Godzilla looks like a puppy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it really, it's no, it looks great and it sounds great and um yeah, it's it's a great time to reevaluate it. I know a lot of people on the first time out this is the 2014 version um didn't rate it much me included but on a rewatch actually it's pretty good um so it's a toss-up between that and the the ten commandments just for watching uh giant badger hang off charlton heston's face in ultra high def it's supposed to look absolutely beautiful it's it's gorgeous beautiful badger gorgeous badger <laughs> on a gorgeous, gorgeous. Man. That was shot on this, that's this division this division yeah. 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 yeah it is and it looks, Not to it be looks amazing. Not with it, the uh, just... Windows version of the same name. So, uh... <laughs> Division Badger. <laughs> I think I saw them at the Camden Roundhouse. Yeah, that could go two, completely two thousand and two. Yeah. Wrong way, cuz yeah. supporting half man, half biscuit. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> right, time for TV show of the of the month, Steve. 
Uh, um, well, I'm I'm going to go. I think it might be Kaz's as well. Uh, Mayor of Easttown, fantastic. Really That's enjoying good, this. Isn't uh, it? HBO. What a show! I came out of nowhere. Yep. I, I just thought I'll give it a go, and I am loving it. And Kate Winslet has is, I mean, she's always good. Yeah, but she's particularly good in this. Really good. Uh, as yeah. a, and a brilliant accent too. Real mm. spot on accent she's been putting in there. Um, but yeah, it's basically about a a, um, a woman detective. Um, you know, and she's got her own personal issues. You know, with her family and everything. And then there's a murder, and she's investigating the murder. It's very true uh, detective. It's a, yeah, it's very true detective. It, um, small town America. Everyone knows everybody else. Lots of secrets. Bit a bit um a bit sort of um Twin Peaks in some respects. Mm. Um, uh, but just uh, yeah, just a good fun. You know, not fun. That's probably not the right word. But no, an enjoyable and well-made, yeah. engrossing drama slash police procedural. Are you looking yeah. for the word engrossing, Steve? It's, re- it's engrossing. really good. Thank you. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's, that's I mean, I mean, you should kind of trust HBO. But I have to say, when I heard it, I was I, I immediately thought, oh, you know, what's this about? I, I didn't put it to the top. It's not of a priority. great title. <laughs> no, I think that might be the issue. It isn't. I mean, I don't know why they got carried away with their play on words. Um, yeah, because like, Mayor of East Town, it's M A R E, which is her first name, not M A J M A Y O R. So um, yeah, it's, but it's, uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, you have to be in on the joke. Okay, <laughs> and that's your one, Kaz. So uh, uh, Tom, what's yours? Um, I I haven't got Falcon. anything beyond Falcon and the Winter Soldier, really, and I don't really want to say that that's the best TV of the month. It is the okayest TV of the month. <laughs> good for you. I, I like the fact that you're not getting caught up in the hype train. Okay. Which yeah. leads it's, us on to Falcon it's... and the Winter Soldier. No. No. <laughs> no. You, I think other people watch TV. Ed? Uh, Taskmaster. Uh, still, uh, it's still ongoing. Um, the episode last week included the two word phrase, absolute casserole, uh, which doesn't make a huge amount of sense out of context. If you're not absolutely losing it by that stage having watched the entire episode then frankly you have no sense of humor and i feel very sorry for you it is utterly magnificent television and you are missing out by not watching it so i'll be brief and and succinct but it's that and it's that by the distance of the earth to the sun it's fabulous okay. good stuff um i've actually been watching anything new i've been watching air crash investigation which has been good this new season is really good mm-hmm. uh i've also been watching a lot of sky documentaries because i'm getting rid of sky so i, I thought I'd, i'll get through this i, I think i mentioned the uh but uh reynolds doc you reynolds mentioned one, that last week yeah, yeah mentioned that last week so i watched that and i've also been watching um there's a series on there that was produced by tom hanks called the movies and it goes yeah, from that, yeah. every decade there's like two parts for every decade and uh, it's made a few years ago so it kind of ends in the mid 2000s but um yeah it's really interesting uh, stories from the behind the scenes and that kind of thing and why films were popular and so on so um if you haven't watched it then grab that because it's if you're interested in movies you'll be interested in, in, in oh my goodness that reminds me i've got the story of film on dvd to watch someone got me that for christmas and i've just not opened it i need to watch that yeah. Thank you for reminding me. No problem. Um, well, I'm going to say uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. I watched the first episode. I haven't watched any of the others because I was saving it till I did my rack. I've done my rack, so I'm going to watch it this weekend. Ooh, so, so we can't talk about it. Well, if you're going nice to talk rack. about it, try, try not to. No, no, let's do it properly next time because we're, we're, we're over time anyway and we have Oscars. All right, we'll okay. Save well, it let's... for when you've watched it, Phil. Okay, mm-hmm. right, okay. Thank you very much, Cuz. That is appreciated. Right, so let's move on to Oscars. Uh, is it is it still interesting to people? Do people still I don't think there'll be a ceremony next year? The viewing figures or anything to go by? Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> it it carried on the time honored tradition of having fewer viewers than last year. <laughs> well, it's it, it, no, be not one just next fewer. Year? I mean, it was twenty six million last year, and it was less yeah. than ten million yeah. this year. And I know that there's been no big films and blah blah blah. And for some reason, they decided to not do the last award as the best film. I think they thought that oh. I reckon um, um, Chadwick Boseman's going to win. We'll do that last and get a nice big emotional payoff at the end, but then he didn't win. Did you see that? <laughs> uh, Andy Hopkins won, and Andy Hopkins wasn't yeah. there either. So. So, yeah, just um, just to step in for a second. So, obviously, Chadwick Boseman did not win Best Actor. Did you see how they did honour him this time? Oh. They offered a non-fungible Chadwick Boseman token as part of the uh, as part of the 
Oscar's gift bag to, to attendees. It someone was... um, someone just said in the comments earlier, I'm sorry, I've forgotten their name, if we could start doing early podcasts as non-fungible tokens. Oh, you oh. could own the Theodore Rex episode. Um, I mean, I don't know whether you want to own the Theodore Rex episode. It's one of the most... Non-fungible token. It's one of yeah, the crypto, most... Yeah, crypto, Kaz, crypto. Yeah, basically it's, it's Bitcoin, but for yeah. JPEGs. Yeah, and I'm just yeah. not sure I'd use the word token with Chadwick Boseman after he's dead. It seems a little bit. No, 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 that's just they're just NFTs. Well, no, that I know, be, sure, yeah. it's still. I mean, the, it was it just beyond nonsense. Beyond nonsense. NFTs. Just this is my personal view. Not you know, NFTs are a grift, and I think that it is just absolute nonsense to think that you are honoring someone in any way by offering uh, uh, an nft based on a no a, no anyway. i agree can we just say it could just to separate that i believe that there are meritorious applications of nfts but i completely agree with you that that is not one of them <laughs> <laughs> no i think no i'd, I'd like to be more open-minded um it, interestingly they didn't make the cut but king's leon released an album uh, a little while back and the vinyl release has an nft system which does it's all about um access to gigs and concerts in perpetuity and going forward and stuff like that and it, obviously it's still open to grotesque abuse if they suddenly split up and don't do anything and so on and so forth but the idea at least is not without merit and not That's least a neat idea not, i've not i've not heard of that being done before they're I, not I will, dishonoring I the dead at the same time so you know yeah. so no, I, I agree with you tom i just i don't and i also believe that um nfts like any other cryptocurrency uh please don't get involved in them unless you could necessarily stand to lose money um <laughs> and it, you know not be ruined by it but there are some interesting things going on with it but the oscars. <laughs> the, oscars. <laughs> the oscars so so let's go through um the main ones anyway we won't go through absolutely everything there's a huge list but uh i guess you know best picture best actor best director and so on so why don't we start with best picture basically so, so. No, nomad land won the headliners didn't which will be on much, yeah. disney best plus picture. on friday yeah. yeah and i will Is be it, yeah, it's um, friday for tom yeah. yeah yeah posting a review of it on on friday very very exciting yeah that's best picture best director and best actress and um, all super well deserved. I mean, the it's it's it is not just uh, an enthralling story, but it is stunning to watch as well. Um, Chloe Zhao, who is um, <laughs> also has the Eternals coming out this year. Like, yeah. what a what a weird She's a good year, <laughs> yeah. Um, which is a Marvel movie, I should say. And um, but no, her use of like um, natural lighting in Noma is it it just makes it look very special and um, yeah so look forward to the review of that but everything that it won entirely deserved Frances entirely McDormand deserved. has had three nominations for yes. Best Actress and she's won all three yes. <laughs> yeah she's brilliant she's, she's also brilliant. been nominated yeah. three times Best Supporting Actress and hasn't won any of those <laughs> so she, she's so, yeah, not, it's, it's all not a great all, team player all, all, all no, nothing, no, not a team but, player yeah. not a team player <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. cheers so, great yeah, Hopkins won Best Actor. 83, isn't he? He's 83. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. deserved. It is deserved. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's, you know, it's and it, and also he might, I mean, I don't know how many more he's got in him to get uh, another Well, he's got more in him than Chadwick Boseman, I'd say. No, I, think, I appreciate that. But, I, think uh, giving, I think giving Boseman the Oscar, in, in a way it would have been nice, but in a way it would have been kind of cheap. And I, service. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Also, also, I've got to say, Riz Ahmed delivered a stunning performance in Sound of Metal. So. Is, there, is there not like an honorary Oscar that they do sometimes? Like, don't they? Don't they? Uh, I don't know. Don't they, they, they do give out, roll that out one. Oh, I thought that was more of a Grammy thing. Not, sure not just for somebody who's died, they just, I don't think. I don't know, the the Irving J. Thalberg Award, which they give to people who play like, nominated lots of times, but never, they gave it to Spielberg after being nominated so many times, but never won. And then after that, he won Schind on Schindler's List. So they gave it to Lucas, you know, for something. I don't thing, know. You know. They, they could have called, could have pulled out an, an award like, anyway. I just, I, I don't, I, I think, uh, I think I'm okay with it not being a tributary award and instead. I mean, um, this is all meaningless anyway it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, all <laughs> it's interesting to see uh what movies are getting honored like 
in the nominations, but ultimately the, the winners. Yeah, you were not that. happy about Judas, were you? That sucks. Um, Daniel Kaluuya won um, for Best Supporting Actor, which he was great. He was great. But he was not quite as good as Lakeith Stanfield in that movie, who should Yeah, who put that, Lakeith Stanfield wasn't a supporting actor. He was the lead. <laughs> Neither of them. That's the, that's the stupid well, no, thing. I'd say, no, the... I, think, I think Lakeith Stanfield is the lead of the film. It's his story. I, and, yeah, I, and Daniel Kaluuya's, you know, Fred Thompson. Is it Fred Thompson? Uh, yeah. Okay. He's, okay. He, I, is, he is the I would supporting have said... character. So I think that's fair enough. I think I see what you're saying, Steve. But I, I mean, I would I would have said that they were joint leads. Um, but the fact well, that I'm sure Daniel Kaluuya won... will be more than happy with the best supporting actor. Absolutely, Oscar. <laughs> absolutely. But Lakeith Stanfield gave the better performance in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, but it, it was good. It was. It's great. It's nice to see that being being recognised. Has anyone um, seen Minari? No, oh, I've still yeah, not seen been Minari. On the list, yeah. Um, and I really like Stephen Yeun. He's great. So yeah. that's I'm, I'm out of an Oscar weekend. Do Nomad Land, Promising Young Woman, and Minari. I think this weekend. The the other um, sort of foregone conclusion, but still a disappointment, was um, Best Animation, which really, really should have gone to Tom Moore um, and didn't. Uh, went to Soul, as you would absolutely expect. Um, so despite... which one? Which one is that? Wolf Walkers. Wolf Walkers, yeah. Yeah, it should have um, gone to Wolf Walkers by far. I mean, yeah, it's a tremendous. Uh, Tom Moore is long overdue an Oscar. I can't think of a single film he's made that hasn't been moving and gorgeous. And um, like when you look at things like uh, Song of the Sea, and yeah. Breadwinner, right. and he, every time The Secret of Kells. Every time he makes a movie, it is yeah. But they're not Disney amazing. Pixar, so no, I, know. I don't know why he's bothering. But it's, I mean, it's Soul thing. was good, but it was kind of Pixar plays the hits, really, wasn't it? And um, I, I really enjoyed Soul, I, but I'm, I, I, it's a, it's a, it's a winner without Wolf Walkers in that. List. I agree. I have nothing against so, Soul. I thought it, it affected me, and I loved the music, and yeah and still wolf walkers, still you know wolf walkers. <laughs> if you take wolf walkers off the list it would be the de facto winner not the not like the head above shoulders winner yeah but yeah, but with wolf walkers true. on there it, it just doesn't it, it feels like um just them playing it safe but that is that's the oscars license taxi man's just saying onward was nominated as well was it yeah <laughs> <laughs> that, that movie was a fine pixar movie as well it, Good it, job, Pixar. It, you made a Pixar movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you say that, but it's a pretty high bench mark. It really it? is. It really yeah. is. I mean, yeah, it really is. Even, even if they're doing the same thing, it's still yeah. pretty high. Yeah, they're get to consistently you. good. I mean, yeah. I, again, onward, probably a little bit like Soul, but maybe. I mean, it, it's they still find that Pixar moment. That's the one thing that, that always gets me. With them. The last 10 minutes like, of uh, Onward, there, there was a lot of dust in the room. Yeah. Sure. Now, on, when we say, word, when, when we say there's a lot tough. of dust in, oh, I haven't watched it yet. When we say there's a lot of dust in the room, are we talking more dust than the opening sequence in Up? No, no. no. I mean, we, up, well, that's what I was about to mark, say. But... Onward is up yeah. in reverse. So, up first ten minutes, you're crying <laughs> yeah. your eyes out. Yeah. Uh, onward, last ten minutes, you're crying. Yeah. Because yeah. the, 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 I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready for that level of emotional demolition it's again. I, I, I wasn't ready for it sitting in a cinema. That, uh, I'm, I'm quite that's one of the very few true. occasions i was glad i was wearing two pairs of glasses like a complete tit <laughs> so no one could sure. see what was going on behind <laughs> so, uh, you know but yeah yeah you don't don't expect it in onward which was which was otherwise a you know fun but worthy mm-hmm. oh the best song also went to judas and the black messiah i've just remembered um which fair enough good good bit of music it was not husevic though Husevic was robbed. The Eurovision, <laughs> uh, the oh, Eurovision yes. song from uh, the Story of Fire Saga, is a banger. I man. Have to admit, that there is, is something that it it does. Boy, per- oh boy, perfectly captures what it takes to win a Eurovision. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> it's the best Eurovision song that was never in Eurovision. Yeah. The uh, the best Eurovision song ever was the uh, Latvia one, which was "We Are the Winners of Eurovision." I uh, <laughs> the sheer balls out audacity of that. It's still my Eurovision highlight of all time. So, uh, 
Yeah. Well, and also, you had a wildly gyrating bald man on the stage, and you know what's not to like about that. Well, you're talking about time. Time is rapidly moving on, so let's uh, crack on through the list if we can. So, best cinematography. Mank, I believe. Is it? Yes, yep. Mank. Are we actually doing them all? No, <laughs> we're just, no, we're just we're just going to pick up. Uh, on sound and metal got best sound, which which is fair enough. yeah, which and, is, yeah, and, 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 well. and best editing. editing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, fair. Yeah. They spread out the awards quite evenly, didn't they? Really, I mean, three for Nomadland, but everything else got two I each. Think... Apart from the trial of the Chicago Seven, which got well, nuts. it was either seven or nothing. So you know, <laughs> Ooh. Well, apparently it does play very fast and loose with the reality, with the truth. <laughs> I think uh, uh, best yeah. visual effects. That's usually a big, big one. It's tenet, isn't it? Yeah, it's Tenet. Fair oh, enough. Yeah. As long as it didn't win best sound, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. Surely is. Oh, thing uh, sorry. Well. Speaking of visual effects, I just remember what my favourite film of the month's been. I really, really enjoyed Stowaway. I thought it was a good movie. Isn't that? Isn't it a great movie? And it's genuine. For, unusual, for once, it was pretty scientifically accurate. It was okay. <laughs> it was as okay as a film is likely to get. I think in terms. I mean, if, of... you, if you can get past the idea that they wouldn't notice someone was on the space. You know, yeah, if, and and that they... there there are a few like compounding catastrophes that, that yes yeah but, and it's all you that know, kind it's, of thing it's a movie it's a movie they have to have a plot you know that's but no i it, yeah it was, i'm it was glad well you made. said that because i liked it too mm. okay but and the effects are good that's what they made are. me think of it the special they effects are. are really good in it so. well i think we've covered uh all of the the major ones if yeah. anybody hasn't uh seen it seen the full They've list and it is uh uh, yeah, it's widely awesome. available. <laughs> yep. um, but yeah, we're, we're running fast out of time. So we got to do the question that came in earlier on, Ed. So yes, you absolutely to right. Mention uh, who it was, you know, what they donated, and what the question was. Yes, absolutely right. Um, Zani Whoop 69, <laughs> um, the 69th of his name, donated £10. Thank you very much. Question for Ed Getting the Raker Plane 8, would you recommend the Ania uh, cartridge or the uh, Afita 3? Also, is the Phono MC up to the job for these? Now, this is complicated. I can't give you a 100% answer on this because when I reviewed the Planer 8, the option was the Afita 2 cartridge, the older model. I have not heard the Planer 8 with the Afita 3. Now, I'm going to be honest. I still think that you should go for the Anya or the Anya Pro because they just, the Anya, when I tested the two together, it's one of those combinations that's greater than the sum of its parts. I thought it was absolutely fabulous. Um, the Anya Pro is going to give you a bit more of the same. Um, I'd actually, do you know what? I'm going to sit my neck out here on this one. I'd honestly, I recommend that you go planar eight, normal Anya, not the Anya Pro, 498 pounds or whatever it's gone up to now. 499 i think something like that and then you can use that with the phono mc because it was designed to work with that that cartridge and the money that you save on that you can spend on an enormous shelf of records to actually enjoy playing on it and you will love absolutely every single one of those sometimes more is not better is my honest answer to that i'd go that way uh and i promise you you'll love it and you won't have oh, what would have happened if I'd spent this or that and so on and so forth. You can revisit that in a couple of years' time when you've, you know, you might need to do a stylus change on the Anya. Go for the sensible price one, buy more records, love the turntable. Okay, hopefully that answers your questions on the Whoop 69. Uh, and thank you very much for your tempo. And yes, thank you. It really is, uh, it really is appreciated. Uh, right, so to wrap up, we've got a podcast competition, cars. Sure, to win a copy of Rolled and Be- Beatrix, the Tale of the Curious Mouse on Blu-ray, use the following question to select the correct answer from the competition page. Who stars in um, Rolled and Beatrix? And, it's, and suffice to say, it's neither of them. Uh, excellent. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, it, you, I think you might have Beatrix. no right answers even after you've asked the question. <laughs> Good for you, Kaz. Uh, th- th- this one's going to go down to people who can actually use Google, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, uh, we've overstayed our welcome. So, uh, thank, thank you very much. Oh, can I plug, us. Phil? Can I plug? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes, of course you can. That's all yeah. right. Just so, uh, <laughs> really yeah, quickly on. Yeah. Yeah. 
on Tuesday, we've got the AV Forums movie podcast. And this month we are talking about, uh, initially, Without Remorse, the Tom Clancy adaptation about John, Cal's surname? John, John Clark. Clark, well, thank you John very Ke much. Kelly initially, isn't he? But anyway. Yeah. Uh, but we will also be talking about um, the history of Tom Clancy novel adaptations leading into a bit more of a, an expansive um, conversation about book to film adaptations in general, what makes them work, when do they fall down, um, etc. So please do join us for that. It's on Tuesday at 8 p.m. And as I say, HBO, if you are listening, a Red Storm Rising series, one season, that's all it needs to be, 10 episodes. Just I'm with you the, on that, Ed. All, they don't... Spend all the money in the world and it would be absolutely jaw-droppingly magnificent. Absolutely, because they don't even have to link that to Ryan or anything. Like that. They don't have no. to get involved in that whole legal nonsense. I think if HBO did anything like that, they would be tremendous. But unfortunately, the people keep, who keep picking up this stuff just appear to use Shadow Recruit as a as a model. Uh, don't get me wrong, Red Storm Rising, the idea of televising it would terrify most sane people. But if you got the right people together, now in a world where you can do genuinely convincing CGI at not, you know, at high but not astronomical pricing, you could have an, it, it would be, well, I mean, you know, it'd just be monumental television. Not least because it would make us all, you know, yearn for the safe, warm days in nineteen eighties where it was just two superpowers facing off against each other. You know, so uh, yeah. Tune into the podcast, Ed, and we might talk about it. Uh, okay, so I might. Tuesday, May the fourth. Yes, be with Star you. Wars Day. But yeah. there will be no Star Wars content. Well, there's no Bad Star Batch. Wars coming out. Well, there's Bad Batch. There's yes. Bad Batch. Okay. <laughs> all right. But no, the, the 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 poll was that it wasn't going to be discussed. We are a democracy. We're going with it. Okay. Yeah, we are. Fifty percent was uh, without remorse. Fifty. We are beholden to the patrons. <laughs> yeah. Since uh, Tom's okay, on so, this, so all of seven people will be watching it. <laughs> no, Tom mentioned it a few weeks ago, but um, I checked out Star Wars. Is it Star Wars Vintage? Is that what they're calling it? I yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, and uh, I've not seen. I hadn't seen. Um, I've got the DVDs, but I hadn't ever watched them, so I hadn't seen the Ewok movies since they were, you know, on TV or on. The oh VHS man. Jesus, they're bad. I mean, oh, I'm never, I am never going to complain about modern Star Wars sorry. again because even the worst of it is better than that. I'm sorry yeah. you had to see that. I love like, even as even I as a kid. It all. I couldn't make it all the way through. I mean, Bill, I did your parents did your did your parents buy that caravan? Because can you persuade them to name it the Caravan of Courage? <laughs> <laughs> even even as a kid, I knew that movie was bad. Caravan of Courage. I believe. I, love it. I believe I did see it as a kid, and I believe that I have absolutely expunged it from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that in the first one, in Caravan of Courage, the Ewoks are, you know don't talk, and then there's like by the second film, Battle of Endor, it's like yeah, make them talk because otherwise this is going to be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> they had the uh, they got the uh, the cartoon from the holiday special with Boba Fett which is okay apart from the fact that Han Solo appears to have had his face stretched yeah um, he looks like a horse and uh, there's the Clone Wars 2D uh, the Gen series which, which is actually quite good fun yeah. uh, and then there's the droid no is it droids they've got oh, no Ewoks they've got the Ewoks cartoon series which is bloody awful for some reason they haven't put the droids cartoon series on yet but I'm sure that'll turn up at some point mm -hmm. okay, I love so the they... original Clone Wars they're really good. So there Those you go. That's, that's our uh, Star Wars content. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Delivered in a, a, a burden of there. derision. Whatever. Right. So, uh, yeah, look out for the movies podcast. We're obviously back on the Wednesday as well. So you've got a podcast on Tuesday. you got a podcast on Wednesday. Uh, also, remember, if you are a patron, uh, you get 10% off the merch. So uh, go to the merch store. And uh, it's a good reason to be a patron. You can go and buy yourself some some t-shirts good uh, high quality so, clothing yeah yes yeah. Uh, they're really comfy this t-shirts as well right so that's it for this week my thanks to ed selly i hope i didn't just say all that out loud just now Kaz Harlow. why make trillions when we can make billions tom davis you shot me you a-hole and steve withers i've got more chins than the chinese phone book if you enjoyed this podcast, then please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Plus, hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss out uh, on any of the live streams that we publish, like the movies podcast. Uh, and also product reviews, and there's a sentence video for the G1. So if you're the G1 owner, uh, that'll be up on our YouTube channel on Friday. Now, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You can bookmark avforums.com for latest reviews, news, and videos. Plus, why not leave us a five-star rating on uh, whichever service it is that you listen to, if they allow it. And uh, I'm Phil Hinton. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.
Bye-bye.